Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Going Deep segment, we're going to be featuring Dr. Johnny Franco. He's founder of Austin Plastic Surgeon. He's also clinical faculty at the University of Texas Dell Medical School. He's president of the Austin Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons, and his expertise has earned recognition in various media outlets. He shares his knowledge through his popular podcast, Plastic Surgery Untold. Moreover, Dr. Franco's commitment to advancing medical knowledge is evident through his role as a national trainer for industry leaders and advisory board memberships with organizations like Real Self, Yes Doctor, Bioaesthetics, and Apex Medical. He joins me today to chat about liposuction safety, the risks and rewards involved, as well as the benefits of carbon dioxide therapy pre and post procedure. Joining me now and welcoming us to the show is Dr. Johnny Frankel, welcome to the show, superstar. No, thanks for having me. This is great. Super exciting. As as you probably know, liposuction has actually been the number one procedure uh, in plastic surgery the last two years. So uh, I think this is a perfect topic. Oh, you are so popular right now because to your point, yes, in recent statistics, liposuction overtook breast augmentation as most popular cosmetic surgery. Now, the contouring procedure, which uses suction to remove excess fat, accounted for about 15% of cosmetic surgeries performed worldwide, and changing trends are part of a global surge in aesthetic, men- in aesthetic medicine, which saw over 30 million surgical and non-surgical procedures carried out in the year 2022, which was a jump of 20% from the previous year. Now, who would have thought that lipo would end up being so popular? Could you please start by sharing with our audience your journey into the world of high def lipo sculpture and advanced body contouring? And more importantly, what inspired this career path? Yeah, I think it's been a a little bit of a a transition stuff. I'll tell you, I ended up doing a aesthetic fellowship in Miami. So I think you can't really do aesthetic fellowship in Miami and not be into uh, body contouring and liposuction and sculpting, uh, you know, uh, trying to make Austin the new, you know, plastic surgery capital of the world from from Miami. But I think that was that was a big part of it. I actually uh, grew up on a little pecan orchard. So I was used I was used to doing something physical, you know, being being a part of something. And then, you know, between science, doing something physical, Plastic surgery was just such a, a unique art. And I think with liposuction more than anything else, and, and that's where the liposuction term has gone away. And now we talk more about liposculpting and high definition because it's truly become a an art and science meld together uh, to really kind of sculpt people, but really identify their own you know, kind of unique body frame. And we'll get into some of the unique technology that has really kind of made this, uh, I think, super exciting again. And, and I think there's kind of two pivot points. One, I think over the, the pandemic stuff, a lot of people uh, got into the dad bod phase and just kind of sweatpants and, and you know, most of us weren't wearing suits or dress clothes anymore. And, and maybe life got away from us just a little bit. And I think as people kind of got back into healthy lifestyles, def- no question turned to, to liposuction as part of that. Uh, definitely, there's been some education on our side that liposuction is not a weight loss procedure, but uh, uh, definitely some exciting opportunities for patients. Yeah, without a doubt. And I'm going to assume that the best candidates, because there have to be candidates for liposuction, right, Mm -hmm. are patients who already concentrate on a healthy diet and exercise as part of their daily regimen. And and when you talk about lipo or liposculpture, uh, the procedure does not cure, to your point, or combat all aspects of obesity or get rid of cellulite, right? So mm-hmm. while while women tend to gain fat in their stomach, hips, and thighs, men suffer from gaining in their midsections and chest areas. Both men mm-hmm. and women, without a doubt, are benefits um, are, are can benefit from liposuction treatments. And it's been around for for many years, but your work has advanced the field significantly. So what are the primary differences between the traditional liposuction as we know it and the high def lipo sculpture of today's technique. I, I think to a couple of your points, no question that 
uh, patients need to be as close to their ideal weight uh, before getting any type of liposuction because it's not going to help you lose weight. I think if you get liposuction with the goal of changing your overall weight or kind of a, a uh, replacement for healthy lifestyles, uh, treatment for obesity, you're going to be hugely disappointed. You're going to spend a lot of money and not have the results that, that you want. And, and often people can, can sometimes look, look worse in terms of, of things. So I think that's, that's number one, being in, in a great spot. I always tell people the better shape you go into surgery, the better you're going to come out. So, you know, if you keep that in mind, I think that's super, super helpful. I think you bring up a great point about cellulite. You know, cellulite is, is something that bothers a, a, a lot of people, but, you know, liposuction is not a, a cure for that. It's also not a cure for for skin laxity, uh, you know, which we're seeing more and more, you know, because of some of the, the medications out there in, in, a, in America right now as well. Um, and we can get into some of those technologies, but some of the traditional liposuction techniques were just a manual technique of uh, these kind of cannulas and just sucking fat. And I think in the past, we, were, we just had this mindset of we're just going to suck out as much fat as, as we can. And hopefully you look great, you know, but, but there was no kind of artistry to it. And now we really have, have taken much more of an approach of what's your body frame? What's your goals? What are you trying to do in terms of that? So we can use the ultrasound. We can use some of these special energy devices to really kind of sculpt people and, and more of it's, Hey, what, what are we looking for? And, and there's more of a, uh, purposeful meaning to taking out fat rather than just trying to take out as much fat as possible. And I think it's been a, an overall kind of pivot of mindset when we're doing liposuction that has changed for, for plastic surgeons and, and patients. So I'm going to stick on this point. So liposuction won't treat cellulite, right? Cellulite is a complex problem and pockets of fat are only one contributing factor. Liposuction cannot alter the fibrous connective bands that along with the fat cause the dimples and bumps associated with cellulite. And it's important to note that liposuction can actually worsen the appearance of loose, saggy skin. So for the best results, the skin in the treatment area should be firm, smooth, and relatively elastic. And using liposuction to remove fat from an area of the body with loose or saggy skin can leave the skin looking even more wrinkly. So what is the next recommended step? hundred uh, percent. So, so cellulite is, is truly like fabulous brands that are pulling this down. If you think that you're just going to suck fat around it and make that look better, you're going to have cellulite with loose. And so that, uh, not, not the answer for sure. I think a hundred percent, you know, the idea with liposuction is that you're reducing the fat in, in a very strategic way, but that skin is recoiling and, and reshape. And I always tell people your skin is like, you know, your tablecloth or anything that's redraping, you want that surface to be nice and smooth. You want to show off uh, the underlying surface. But if you already have a lot of excess skin and you do liposuction, you're only going to have more excess skin. I do think for some people that just have a slight amount of, of uh, excess skin, there are some new technologies out there uh, to help with skin tightening. But definitely somewhere over the next couple of years, I think there's going to continue to be, be advancements. I think in the world of, of liposuction, there's also some uh, things to help people heal a lot faster in terms of this. And, and uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the show, but the carboxy gel CO2 lift is something that we've definitely incorporated because for most patients, they're attracted to liposuction because for the most part, you can have a very quick recovery. Most people can have a couple of days of downtime, be back to it, especially now that we're getting into the summertime. You know, people want to be, you know, in their beach body ready as quickly as possible. And, and we've started to incorporate the carboxy gel with all of our uh, high definition lipos because what we've seen is when you're actually getting really aggressive and trying to sculpt the body, you put a lot of stress on that skin. And, and you know, the carboxy gel, if people aren't familiar with it, it's really actually super interesting. It actually tricks the skin into thinking that, that it's starving for oxygen just for a brief second, which then makes all those capillaries and other blood cells open up. And we know that blood flow to the skin is what helps with wound healing, helps decrease scar, helps with the, the skin to, to retract faster. And so, you know, it's just one little thing to get people that best result possible as quickly as possible. I love that you just segued to this because... I'm totally a, a, a huge fan of carboxytherapy gel. In fact, to your point, it increases the presence of wound repair factors and growth mm -hmm. factors, which help cells turn over, quote unquote, faster, reducing the appearance of aging scars and stretch marks. It stimulates collagen, of course, and elastin production, which promotes elasticity and helps retain hydration. It improves local metabolism and elimination of waste products, which 
helps the body heal localized damage mm -hmm. such as scars. So that's also mm -hmm. important. But now in parallel, both CO2 lift, and this is interesting, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy utilize oxygen in their respective processes. Mm -hmm. So in CO2 lift, carbon dioxide is applied to the skin and the skin is expected to absorb this CO2 and in the process release oxygen, improving skin health, right? In a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, pure oxygen is administered at an increased atmospheric mm -hmm. pressure. And this higher pressure allows the body to absorb more oxygen into the bloodstream, which can be beneficial for various medical conditions. And the common thread between the two is the focus on oxygenation of tissues, mm -hmm. albeit through different methods. So comparing CO2 lift to a hyperbaric oxygen chamber suggests that there may be some similarities in how both treatments incorporate the use of oxygen. So the CO2 lift product has been in fact, compared by not only you and your peers, Dr. Hoyos as well, to a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. But I would love to know, can you speak to this in your own experience with patient outcome? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, and the other benefit is that you don't need a huge hyperbaric oxygen uh, uh, chamber, you know? And so the, the idea yeah. behind this, because I mean, for most people that that's not realistic in most offices, uh, you know, better New York where, where space is a premium, it's hard to have a chamber for this. But what's really been the innovation of this is that you can actually put this topical carboxy gel over like a fresh liposuction. We'll do it for several days afterwards. The amount of bruising, the amount of little wound healing issue stuff has gone dramatically down for, for our patients. You know, it's so funny because people see so many benefits that a lot of patients will continue it afterwards because they're like, you know what, I've put on other areas of my body because we do it a lot for the body, the tummy, the other areas for lipo. And they're like, I'll do it on my face. I'll do it on my neck because my skin looks so much better even after liposuction with doing this that that they want to do in other places. So our, our experience has been absolutely phenomenal. And I'll tell you, like most people, I was skeptic when I first heard this because it's like, how could this topical gel be so impactful? And uh, uh, my practice has changed over the, the last six to nine months be, because of it, just seeing all of our patients every every day. This warms my heart. I knew that I was onto something when I stumbled onto CO2 lift products mm -hmm. and their incredible founder, Lana Kerr, who is salt of the earth person. And that's extremely important for any company. But the, but I have seen these incredible results myself on my uh, breast scars from my explant procedure with Dr. Rankin. And I, it's phenomenal. I mean, the scars are minimal. Now, many people are interested uh, and I'm going to segue back to liposuction or mm -hmm. liposculpture for, for lack of better terms, but they're interested in liposculpture for cosmetic purposes. So who are your typical candidates for this procedure and what kind of results can they expect? Yeah, I, one of the things that you pointed out earlier is that we've actually seen many more men coming into to the office than, than we used to. Uh, so no question, it used to be predominantly just women, but uh, men, I think, have become much more aware of their bodies as well. And so we have definitely have seen that. Uh, but usually it, it's patients that are a little bit uh, younger and, and younger changes as, as I've continued to age a, a little bit. And so, you know, uh, definitely 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, I think it's always uh, super important to as we talked about earlier, being a good goal weight, people with good good skin quality. And, and then I think the areas that you're getting liposuction, you've got to be a little bit careful. And you, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, uh, you know, tummy, love handles, back, do, do extremely well. You know, when you get into areas like the legs, the butt, the inner thighs, areas that have really, really thin skin, now you need to be a little bit cautious. You need to really talk to your, your plastic surgeon like, hey, is this really going to be a benefit? You know, what are my chances of having some bad outcomes? Because uh, there are different attachments to the skin, depends on the skin quality. And, you know, you can turn something that you think is relatively simple into to a challenging problem. You are so transparent and I love that you weigh all the options. I can't stress enough and how important it is for women and men to go into a consultation with full transparency. What are the risks? What is this going to, you know, where am I going to be after this procedure? What will I have to do? How much more money will I have to spend? What is the worst case scenario? This is so important to address. And the fact that you're so willing and open to have a lengthy conversation during your consultation and give your patients the full disclosure 
albeit anything from lipos, you know, liposculpture, liposuction to, you know, breast lifts and mm -hmm. augmentation and explants. I think that is at the heart of it all. And you are popular for a reason because mm -hmm. before being a plastic surgeon, you're a human being. And I think that go that should be everybody's goal. Appreciate it. Now, I, I think, you know, the, the goal is for us to, to, I always tell people, any plastic surgery procedure is a journey. And so you really want to make sure that you partner with someone that's going to, you know, go through that journey with you, because there's probably going to be some little ups and downs. And so you want to be able to go through it together. Yeah, you want to find a friend. Okay, now we have one minute left. Uh, and you seem to stay at the forefront of medical innovation. And I know that you regularly continue to refine your techniques. Are there any new advancements in lipo sculpture or body contouring that you find particularly exciting? Uh, I think that the biggest thing you're going to see us doing a lot more is uh, uh, the use of the ultrasound. Uh, using the ultrasound now, we can actually uh, look at your muscles, look at your body anatomy, and be able to really lipo around it. So it's almost like lipo in by numbers because you can follow your natural like muscle anatomy throughout this. Uh, even with uh, you know people going uh, more away from implants and other things, we've seen a lot more fat transfer. So you're definitely going to see uh, more of an evolution as we're able to process that fat, as we're able to harvest more and 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 do some things with that in the regenerative medicine standpoint. So I think those things over the next year and a half, two years are going to be super super exciting. For, for people. You are on your A game, my dear. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are very, very inspiring, very informative, and thank you so much for being an expert in your field. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. Now, guys, listen, not vetting your doctor can have serious consequences, and I mean serious. Speaking of your liposuction surgeon, the body contouring procedure should only be performed by a qualified board-certified plastic surgeon, and of course, undoubtedly, with lipo sculpture experience, liposuction is a thing of the past. You definitely want to check out Dr. Franco. Selecting an inexperienced or amateur provider will definitely jeopardize your results and your health. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift. Do check out The Good Doctor at austinplasticsurgeon.com. Not surgeons with an S, austinplasticsurgeon.com. You can also check them out on the gram, all over Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Snapchat at Austin Surgeon and Austin Plastic Surgeon. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift. We'll be right back after this.